Hello everybody, I'm sorry not to be able to be with you at uh, PCST. Uh, this is the first time I miss a PCST conference in the past 20 years, but I'm happy I can give a very small uh, contribution to this, uh, this session. Um, the title I have chosen is A Chemist is Not Really a Chemist and the Hostile Public is Not Really a Hostile Public. Um, a common way to look at public perception of science is to consider it as a series of public misconceptions and misunderstandings. Think, for example, of how Frankenstein, originally the scientist in Mary Shelley's famous novel, came to be associated with the monster and particularly with its classical image as codified by Hollywood movies in the 30s, in the 1930s. Science communication is thus frequently invoked to correct or replace such misconceptions and misunderstandings. But another way of looking at this is seeing communication as an active transformative process rather than as the transportation and relocation of concepts from a social group or domain to another social group of domain, scientific experts and the general public, for example. Along this process, images and concepts can, for instance, become frozen stereotypes that become visual or conceptual conventions, hard to be challenged. The visual history of science offers a rich series of examples. In, in, in this book with my colleague Elena Canadelli, which we recently published, we are exploring some of these examples. Think of the planetary model of the atom. Despite having been superseded and actually never presented in such strict terms in specialist publications, uh, this model of the atom as a planetary system has remained dominant in the public imagination, not just to think about atoms, but also as epitomizing science more in general, in all sorts of graphic varieties or occasions. Or the so-called March of Progress, mm, this image with uh, um, uh, sort of describing the evolution uh, of man from, from uh, its ancestors, which was originally conceived for an educational publication in the mid-60s that soon lost every textual and contextual detail to be absolutized in a way that contemporary evolutionary biologists would consider largely misleading but at the same time becoming highly influential and reproducible within all domains of popular culture. But scientists themselves are not immune from such process. When they talk about publics or about society, for instance, they often refer to imaginary publics or an imaginary society, attributing them attitudes such as prejudicial lack of interest or even hostility against science. This is partly what the famous deficit concept is about. During the UK, for example, during the UK lengthy parliamentary and media debate on embryo research and assisted reproduction in the late 80s, Frankenstein-like scenarios were not evoked by the tabloid press nor by those opposing such techniques, but by those advocating less restrictive regulation of such techniques they were using Frankenstein, they were evoking Frankenstein in order to preemptively devoid uh, this uh, opposition of any credibility. Hmm? There's, a, there's a famous study which I quote from Michael Malkey that Frankenstein was made to speak not of the dangers of science but of the credulity, ignorance and dogmatism of those who were unwilling to endorse the advance of scientific knowledge. Now, the study promoted by the Royal Society of Chemistry, which Chiara is presenting in this session, is a remarkable example of how actual public perception and attitudes can be different from the imagination and projection of the experts. Despite some stereotypical association being frozen in language, chemist, pharm pharmacist, and despite certain concerns with regard to chemicals and their use, Citizens regard and value chemistry and chemists vast more positively than the chemist community would have expected. Studies like this and surveys of public perception of science but in general are thereby a great opportunity to rethink science communication itself beyond the stereotypes, 
not as a tool or fix to challenge or revert public conceptions, but to build on these conceptions and nourish more articulate and informed visions, not just on the part of the public, but on the part of science itself. So, um, to conclude, I thank you and wish you uh, all success with its conference and uh, an enjoyable stay in Istanbul. Bye-bye.